Greetings, fellow Beyonders. I'm your humble host and scribe, Sven, and this is Beyond the Worlds Beyond. Uh, the primary purpose of this series will be exploring the lore and story within these campaigns. In this episode, we'll be looking at the second preview episode of Worlds Beyond Number, The Witch, Then and Now. We'll be doing a quick summary of the episode and then diving into the lore questions that it raises. In this preview, we meet our titular witch, Ame. We open to her as a child, waking within Grandmother Ren's cottage. We learn that she has been living with Grandmother Ren for nearly a year, though we do not yet learn the hows and whys of her coming to stay with Grandmother Ren. As she awakens, we are also introduced to her nemesis, and the best rooster ever, Taro. A wily and cunning old beast, and perhaps something more as well, having appeared in her closed room without explanation. We also have our first introduction to her guardian, Grandmother Wren. She demonstrates quickly the deep care she has for those in her charge and an apt ability to both rein in and more often encourage Ame. While we may not get any display of power, it is clear, at least in that regard, why others would entrust children to her protection. Which brings us to Ame, amid her chores and perhaps a bit of mischief and magical exploration, as a wagon propelled by magical force arrives at the cottage. A wagon we, the listeners, have encountered before, the one that has spirited Suvi away from her parents to now bring her to Grandmother Wren, and thus do the two girls first meet. The full meeting and the adventure that follows will have to wait for another day, and be sure to join the Patreon to have access to it, as we then move to the present. <clears throat> Here we meet an older Ame who it seems has remained with Grandmother Ren through most, if not all, the intervening years. Uh, she's learned much from Ren and now serves in her stead when the older woman is not able. Uh, she meets with a couple from the nearby village of Toma, Melia and Arin, who are seeking aid and guidance in conceiving a child. We witness Ame's growth into her abilities as she opens herself to nature and divination, discovering they will indeed bear a child, one that will bring great joy for Melia, but that joy will be tempered with heartbreak due to Arin's infidelity. Ame presents them with a charm, a magical ring for an appendage other than the finger, that will help ensure the joyful birth and punish the infidelity if her pointed glares have not scared Arin away from that path. We then follow Ame as she cares for the ailing grandmother Ren, in some ways mirroring the care she had herself been given. It is a heartbreaking scene as it becomes clear that grandmother Ren's ailing health also extends to her memory, as she mistakes current-day Ame as one from the past, from a time when Suvi and an honored friend, one must assume Ursulan, were also staying within the household. The heartbreak is to be compounded as Brennan pivots from Erica to Abria, asking the faithful question, does Suvi make it in time? A question to which we, maddeningly, will need to wait to learn the answer. You monsters, we love you. So let's dive into the questions other than that big heartbreaking one, since how could I do it more, any more justice than they did? Plus, I did ask it last time. The first thing I'm curious about and I'll accept I'm likely one of the very few who are, are some questions of geography. Uh, we learned that Grandmother Wren is legendary from one side of uh, Kham to another, but what exactly, what sort of scale is that? Is Akan a province, a kingdom, the continent? Uh, we also learned that Aaron is originally from Port Talon, and this community is near enough that one would travel between it and Toma for special occasions such as the Summer Fair. The wagon bearing Suvi, even while magically enhanced, presumably did not travel vast distances. Does this mean Port Talon was the city that Suvi and her parents landed in, or was that just another port town within the region? Moving from there, we come to the best boy, so far, of the series, Taro. As a child, Ame believes Taro is a spirit, and I suspect she might be right in a sense. Uh, in addition to being wily and intelligent, we see Taro appear within a sealed room, as well as walking unmolested among flesh-eating plants. My personal suspicion is that Taro is Grandmother Ren's familiar, which given her ailing state in the adult portion, would be an answer beside the obvious issue of a rooster's lifespan as why he does not make an appearance in the latter half of the episode. But he better, at some point, reappear, even if it's only in uh, flashbacks. 
I'm also very curious what has brought Ame under Grandmother Ren's care. Uh, we know she has been there a little under a year, so she's not always resided with her. Did her family, too, have reason to leave her with Grandmother Ren? Or is it related to her burgeoning talents as a witch that led to Grandmother Ren taking her on as an apprentice? Does she still have other biological family out there in the world? And if so, how do they feel about her having spent most of her life seemingly away from them? Which brings us to the final question of the episode, and the one most likely to have ramifications on the campaign to come. What exactly did Grandmother Wren mean by the last one? This was obviously something of import, but as Grandmother Wren's memory shift, we failed to get an answer in the moment. Was Grandmother the Wren... Uh, was Grandmother Wren the last witch before she began training Ame, thus meaning Ame is now the last witch? Or was she the last of something else, and is that going to be part of what sets our adult companions on their quest? That's all for this installment of Beyond the Worlds Beyond. As always, please feel free to throw your own questions and theories in the comments, as I love hearing what others latched onto in these amazing vignettes. I've been your host, Sven, and thank you very much for listening. Farewell, for now, fellow Beyonders.